Assalamu alaikum everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about endotoxins versus exotoxins. But before starting the lecture, I like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comment section. Have a cup of tea and let's get started. You can see a table right in front of you. It has got three columns. In the most left one, there are some properties of both the endotoxins and exotoxins. We'll talk about them, which property is different. Let's start with the source. What's the source of release of the endotoxin and the exotoxin? Endotoxin is released by the gram-negative bacteria, right? I've got a tip here that endotoxin has got a word N in it, endo, and negative also starts with N, so just like that you can memorize it. I memorized in that way and I thought it might help you. Then we have got exotoxin. It is released by both the positive and the negative gram bacteria. Secretion from the cell. In the case of endotoxin, I've written no, because it is not secreted from the cell. Instead, it is released from the cell on the rupture of the cell. But exotoxin is released from the cell. It is made inside the cell and it is released. Chemical composition of the endotoxin is the lipopolysaccharide, the LPS. And exotoxin is made up of polypeptide. Endotoxins are present outside the bacterial cells uh, because the lipopolysaccharide is found in the cell membrane of the cell. And exotoxins are present inside the bacterial cells. Toxicity. The toxicity of endotoxin is low. Um, that's why it's high doses of fatal. While the toxicity of exotoxins are high and their low doses are fatal. Antigenicity. It is the ability of an antigen to induce an immune response in human body when it gets interacted. The antigenicity of the endotoxin is poor. It is poorly antigenic. While the exotoxin induces high titer, means high concentrations, of antibodies called antitoxins. Vaccines. There are certain toxoids that are produced by exotoxins, so they are used as vaccines. Um, in case of endotoxin, there are no toxoids produced, that's why there's no vaccine for endotoxin. Heat stability. Endotoxin is stable at 100 degrees of Celsius for one hour, while exotoxin is destroyed rapidly at 60 degrees Celsius. The typical diseases that endotoxin and exotoxins are involved in. Uh, the endotoxin is involved in meningococcemia, sepsis that is caused by gram-negative rods, and exotoxin is involved in tetanus, botulism, and diphtheria. Mode of action of endotoxin is that it starts acting by the release of certain cytokines like interleukin-1, interleukin-6, tumor necrotic factor alpha, and nitric oxide. While exotoxin has got something different in its mechanism. Exotoxin will also act in response to release of certain cytokines, but after acting as a super antigen. There are three types of its action, like type 1 exotoxin, type 2, type 3. I've got a detailed video. Uh, talking about all those types if you want to know more about them find its link in the description or in the top right corner exotoxin also acts by directly damaging the cell either by forming the pores in cell membrane or by damaging the cell membrane and it can also use a second messenger system to affect the cell by inhibiting its protein synthesis or by altering the enzyme activity Clinical effects or clinical findings. Endotoxin is involved in causing fever, shock, disseminated intravascular coagulation, and systemic inflammatory response syndrome. I've got a 7E formula for endotoxin um, in my video that is all about endotoxin. Find its link in the description. There are various toxins, so clinical findings vary from toxin to toxin. If it is a staph bacteria releasing toxic shock syndrome type 1 toxin it can cause fever rash and hypertension 
If it is a Clostridium perfringens bacteria releasing the alpha toxin, it can cause low oxygen supply to different tissues that can cause low energy and leading to death of the tissue cells. And if it is a cholera toxin released by Vibrio cholera, it can lead to watery diarrhea, that is rice, water-like stools. And these are all the features that can differentiate endotoxin from exotoxin or exotoxin from endotoxin. And that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this video made sense. I hope you've learned something new today. If you guys have got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comment section. And also, if you want to connect with me on my social media, I've got my Instagram, I've got my Twitter, and I rarely upload blogs. So if you find some time, do give it a visit. And as always, till next time, Assalamualaikum.